I thought I would run through a good way to become familiar with the functions we've been working on and the functions that you're going to see in the next few years by getting more familiar with how Desmos works and how you can use it to actually play and discover. Um, when you first log on, you are going to get to a page with drawings on it. Um, you can pick any one of those drawings. And what you're going to see to the left, this is kind of cool because I have some moving images in there. What you're going to see to the left are the equations that were used to create that drawing. And if you ever want to know what equation was used for what part, you would simply turn the equations on and off. So for instance, if we wanted to know what this equation was for, we can see that equation was used to make the face. If we want to see what some of these other equations were, let's see, we have the middle eye, and we have the, I mean, the left eye and the right eye. Um, and once you become familiar with what kind of equations um, create what kind of images, you can actually start to play a little bit. Um, let's find something relatively simple here. Let me go on. here and I will see that we pull up the equation of a there's the equation of an I um, uh, it, it's actually not a perfect circle but you can see the general form of the equation is that I have a variable uh, plus or minus a number squared plus a the, another variable plus or minus number squared equals a number. Once you get the general form of the equation, you can go through and you can start playing with your own. You can go ahead and sign into your own account and you can start playing with your own equations. For instance, the general equation of a line looks something, um, of a circle, looks something like this. I'll do this. Uh, we'll go squared plus y plus 2 squared equals 16. So this creates a circle. And this creates a circle, and I can tell you from experience, whose center is at 3, negative 2, and whose radius is the square root of 16 or 4. If I want to play with this and figure out how it works, I can actually take letters, anything but x and y, and I can put them in the parts of the equation that had numbers. And by clicking all, I can create what are called sliders. Now, right now the value of a is 1. If I want to see what happens as the value of A changes, I just take the slider back and forth. If I want to see what happens as the value of B, I'll make this up a negative. As the value of B changes, I take the slider back and forth and the value of C. So now you're understanding how um, students create images. Let's take this thing and move it up a little bit and make it a little bit smaller. And if we want to color it in, we're going to tell it to color in everything that is less than the line. And in graphing, greater than the line would be all outside of it, and less than is going to be 18 um, uh, inside of it. So I'll make this a less than, and then it will color it in. I don't know how to choose these colors, but what I've done is I've created one of the eyes that you've seen. I'm not exactly sure. It looks like I can play it here. And it looks like it's going to go back and forth. It looks like I can change these numbers. I'll step this down to negative 2. I'll step this up to 2. 3. Um, C is the radius, so it can't be a negative number. 5 to 0. And that's how people are animating. Whoop. 5 to
zero. And that's how people are animating some of their images. And that's how they can make the eyes go up and down, or they can make them get bigger and smaller. Looks like I can make it go up and down and get bigger and smaller. And I can make it go back and forth and up and down and bigger and smaller. So now I have a circle that's wandering all over the place. And I can set the numbers out here. And I can start playing with drawing images that contain these types of equations. I can either put in variables to change, or I can change it back if I want something that's in one place all the time the variables that don't change and get rid of these sliders. <coughs> so once you get used to doing this, um, these are the ones that we've been dealing with in class. Um, I can even put sliders into these. Um, maybe I'll put an M there since that's what we represent it as and a B there. Make sliders out of those. And um, I can make a line that goes up and down And in and out of my circle. Slope changes, the y intercept changes. That's if I want to change just the slope. I can create a line that kind of twirls on us, goes to a very steep slope. And then back to a very negative slope. So you can have some fun playing with this stuff. Uh, I challenge you to investigate it on your own. Um, the best way to probably start, as I said, is to take a look at some of these drawings and take a look and see what kinds of equations created what part of the drawing.